All right, so how you all doing boys? Hope you're doing well mate. in today's video. Going to be trying out the brand new Bloody Elizabeth with the Trader Meliodas. Now this is my first time trying her out with the Trader Melian. Also using her alongside this Deanne here who's by far one of the most underrated festivals. I feel like she's been given that same kind of treat as Lolly Merlin where Lolly Merlin was such a good character and even upon release people still said that Escanaut was better even though she is one of the hardest characters or one of the hardest counters to Escanaut in the game. But if you guys don't know what the brand new Elizabeth does, her first card here inflicts flood damage equal to 500% of attack on one enemy. Her second card inflicts damage equal to 275% of attack on all enemies, then deals additional damage equal to 8% of max HP for every orb in the hero's ultimate move gauge. The ultimate, which we have 3 6, inflicts damage equal to 42% of hero's max HP on all enemies, then applies resurrection on all allies for one turn, and last but not least, her passive. Every time one of the applicable users or applicable allies uses a skill, increases their basic stats by 4%, stacking up to 6 times. At max stack applies or applicable characters recovers 30% of max HP, then increased all heroes' stats by 15% for 5 turns. So I'm going to be trying out pretty much all of these skins throughout these next couple of days. So I know a whole lot of you guys probably don't like this skin, but I mean it's not a terrible skin, and although yeah, I do think all of our other ones are probably better than this one. I wouldn't I don't know. How I feel about that one there, the default one, but her cosmetics are completely maxed out and same goes for the DN and Meliodas, so this is a damn using for today and let's jump right into it. And honestly super keen to see what she is going to look like with Meliodas, unfortunately getting out CC to start this one off. And what are we thinking with the starting hand? Okay, a level 100 Meliodas, which is definitely scary. I'm not too sure whether or not I'd say the Meliodas or Elizabeth is going to be more beneficial to get to level 100. Let's see how we're going to do here. I'm thinking for the starting turn. Putting up our taunt and just using the two single targets, both DNs and melees, probably going to be our best bet. Getting that stack of the melee passive, the defensive boost, is going to be really, really important for us. Doesn't look like he's going for that same kind of play though, which should be good. Um, but yeah, other than that, getting to this third turn, getting the Elizabeth heal back, and then kind of just spamming off all of her cards and completely wiping everyone. Using Margaret as well with Elizabeth is going to be very, very good. I'm probably going to use her a whole bunch as of these next couple of weeks, and the Jack of Light Gothel as well has been. So yesterday's video was my first time using the Jack of Light Gothel, and boy am I impressed. That Holy Relic, especially the CC, I noticed when swapping that character out, even when using some of my higher CC characters, the drop is so, so insane. Just having the good substats and generally having 15% gear as well helps. Gothel being a character that's going to be used a whole bunch, I'm of course going to give them good gear. Let's see, and Deanne probably taking a lot of hits here, getting super low, and then her healing straight back to full HP almost. It's going to be really good. Gives her a whole bunch of those gray buffs, which really increases her kill power. Um, let's see, let's go one, two, and five. It's either we either get the Elizabeth passive or we get the melee ultimate. Do I reckon the melee ultimate's more worth it here? I think so. Because we can still get the Elizabeth passive in the next turn and then throw the melee ultimate out right after. Is that going to kill the end? Oh, I mean, we got really, really close. I do really wish I had a couple more alt levels or a couple more dupes in my red tile meal. That way we could get a better effect with them. I am, of course, using the grand roll, the association for Dian, because the extra CC helps out a ton. Um, Let's see, we could... Yeah, if he doesn't put up the taunt this next turn, I might single target into melee to get him a little bit weaker, get that passive proc, and then throw off the ultimate and single target. Is he going to go for a melee ultimate as well, or just a Deanne? I really wish they brought Deanne back in this banner, or even to be able to purchase for a couple of coins, because I don't think they brought back Trader Melee as well, which I was super disappointed in. I have him 4-6 currently, and I mean, I have by far enough coins to be able to get him 6-6, six, six, and I could probably even get Deanne close to 6-6. Six, six. Oh, we lose the Deanne. I, I, knew, I knew it was going to be risky not going for the heal on her, but that's all right. Let's go. We will throw out the melee card, ultimate, and then... I mean, we could throw up the Elizabeth card beforehand to give him the extra buff, but this place should be fine here. Oh yeah, look at that damage. Melee is so absurd. That's level 90 as well. Get the full heal back. I probably should have checked the stats as well. I might actually check after this. Damn, over 1 mil damage. That is so ridiculous. Don't even get to see the Elizabeth card. It's about broken they are. And a... Wow, a Kia Milam team. Okay. Oh, really, really low CC. I mean... I'm still going to include this in video. This is actually probably a perfect time to show off what Liz can do without any of her extra stats given to her. Let's go... Uh, I might just throw this out and we'll see that there. I'm not going to include this full match because it's pretty much going to be a steal. 
but let's see what kind of damage those can get right out the bat. Okay, 140 from the AoE. And yeah, 100,000 from the single target. It's not terrible. She is going to rely a whole lot on actually getting for those later turns. And wow, what a perfect opportunity this would have been to have her fully built out. God damn. And uh, this is what we like to see. Some of these full Archangel teams and massively getting out CC as well. I still have yet to use the green Sariel with Elizabeth as well. I do believe there is a way to actually fully proc. Is it Margaret's passive? Turn one with the green Sariel, which is absolutely crazy. This Sariel with Holy Relic as well is such a fun character to use. Let's see, those debuffs are definitely going to be really, really annoying. Uh, yeah, I think we'll go for our same starting hand. Although I definitely would prefer not to attack, considering Sariel has his taunt up. Uh, we're s I mean, we can't get the Ellie stacks without actually throwing out cards, so I really would have liked to have had a double taunt or something in this turn. That shouldn't do a crazy amount of damage. Yeah, no. It's more just the debuffs getting put on us is my main thing, because I can imagine they're going to have a first execution as well just in the back line, which just makes them a whole lot stronger. And some Ellie cards would be nice. Okay, sweet. Mm. Unfortunately, no double single target. However, we could do the thing again where we end up rushing Melly's ult and kind of just relying on Deanne to tank a bunch of hits. We... Okay, can we, we can remove Ellie's ult. Which is going to be super, super handy. I think we honestly go for that same play. Deanne's got a whole bunch of HP on her still. Is that another single? Okay, sweet. I mean, she has taken quite a bit of HP now. He's gone back to full HP. Mm. Okay, so yeah, we can remove you. Go for the merger there. And we'll throw that out. So yeah, next turn, whoever ends up surviving will get their 30% HP back. We can... Get our boost up and then hopefully melee can just wipe again this honestly seems like it's going to be a really good strategy for this team i mean you could probably even put a green queen shot melon in the back i know the holy relic isn't going to be supporting a whole lot but getting that extra ultimate gauge to kind of solidify those melee ultimates is going to be a huge huge thing for this team and yeah is there much you can do here none of these characters have any form of ult control i mean margaret and cyril are both aoe characters and elizabeth's the only one with a single target i just don't think they can burn through us at this point yeah, look at that. Easy money. And although Elizabeth isn't doing a crazy amount, like, with her cards, her just being here, the passive, everything she's doing for the team is so crazy. After we use this sing... Oh. If the opponent doesn't forfeit, we will have a look at Melly's and Elizabeth's stats after this. Let's go one, go two, and then throw off this Melly card. I wonder if we might just actually kill Sariel off these two. Oh no, she's still... Yeah, because you haven't got the buff yet. That's right. Throughout the AoE. Ooh. 400,000, which is super good. And then the melee ultimate. What do you reckon? Another 1 mil? Easily? Oh, just shy, man. That's still 4 6. That's super good. And yeah, look, there's the 4. But we all know what's going to happen. And I mean, on a pretty hot streak at this point, OG Tarmiel. With the old school Elizabeth as well. I think this is the first time I've seen old school Elizabeth since the new one's come out. Let's go 1, 2, and. Uh, yeah, we'll attack Elizabeth. The sooner we can get rid of her, I feel like she definitely has the weakest substats out of all the characters on the field, so hopefully we can get some crits here. Dan yeah, always do. Oh my. <laughs> and this is why. Oh man, this Elizabeth is so absurdly impressive. And although both of these characters struggle to deal a crazy amount of damage one turn, I mean, I feel like you put both of them in their best teams. And I mean, comparing what Demon Lord Rumor can do with a level 1 PS card right out the gate, it's definitely hard. Like. Those characters obviously will get a whole lot stronger as turns go on, and I feel like these three characters here are the three characters that build up the most out of being in the field for the longest. Uh, what do we want to... I think I might just go for the same kind of play. But yeah, they, all these three characters build up so much over the turns, and they can just become so absurdly strong. It's real hard to say which one's better. Honestly, Trader Melly and Elizabeth both stand best and second best character in the game easy. I don't, I don't mind who you put as first and who you put as second. Let's see though, we've already propped the revive. Um, I've, we can definitely finish this off in this next turn. Damn, I still, I'd really like to have the 660 end to kind of show off that Quell ultimate with the extra stats. Um, and when we actually tick over here, because we haven't had a look at it this far, um, we can look at the Elizabeth stats, see what she's looking like. Come on. Yeah, look at that, an extra 10,000 attack, almost an extra 60,000 HP. And that's without her having kind of extra supports. You know, you could have Margaret and the team would be getting a whole bunch more support. You could be having Jack of Light, Gothar, all these kind of characters. So this is kind of her just supporting herself without any other characters there for her. Can we get rid of Margaret? Oh, she is, she is tanking really, really well. But hey, nothing, nothing Nelly can't handle. Let's go. 
And please, some more early cards. Would be nice. Girl Thunder in the back. Yeah, I was, I was a little concerned to why our damage was looking like how it was, but that's... There's no way people can tank that well without Girl Thunder. Yeah, I've got a couple extra Elizabeth cards. I can... We can definitely kill this Tarmiel as well, since he put up that stance. Let's see here. Come on. Oh, don't tell me it's... <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that either. Honestly, hot take, should Elizabeth also have been given cleanse upon her kind of massive step up? Because I feel like that would still be fair in all honesty. And uh, here we go. I think this is my first time coming up against Elizabeth and Jack of Light Gotha. A really strong team we're coming up against here. Oh, real nice merger on the Ellie as well. Uh, let's... Who do we want to go for? I think getting rid of this Gotha might be our best bet. Probably the... Probably one of the squishier characters in the team, Dian also having type advantage is going to help out a ton. Can we get some no crits from Melee? That's right, pretty much half health right out the gate is going to be good for us. If we could get a level 3 in this match, that'd be perfect. In my whole time using Elizabeth, I have not seen a level 3 single target from her. And yeah, we can definitely get rid of this go through in this next turn as well. The, these two units, although the way you see Elizabeth at her strongest is definitely with the full Archangel team. I don't know what I'd call her best team yet, because, I mean, having a buffer unit like Trader Meliodas is just so absurd. It's kind of just deciding who that melee unit's going to be, and I feel like Dan is going to do a really good job of that. Having the taunt, another character having ult control, ultimate that also one taps at 6-6. Six, six. Mm, and we'll go AoE. So yeah, that'll get us our full heal. Another thing as well, <laughs> I feel like I'm just trying to make Elizabeth the best character in the game at this point, but give me a go cleanse on the 6 card use, along with the heal and everything, and I feel like also the stat buff increase applying before the 6 card is actually come out would also be super super nice. Yeah, look at that, everyone's full HP, she, she already does enough for the team. It's a little hard to say she'll be good in PvE content as well, considering her buff only lasts for 5 turns, whereas, I mean, you can last 20 turns in the bird, and Meliodas' defense is going to be there the whole time. Makes him so insanely powerful. Dan is going to be really strong after all this damage taken. She survives again. Let's go. Yeah, think about think about how much health she would have right now if she had that red time. Your grace six six. Uh, let's see. Mm, one two and three. Why not? If anyone's going to be able to survive here, it'll be Melly. So hopefully we can have everyone survive and then throw off the ultimate as well. Could be pretty sick. Uh, do I maybe do I maybe regret using the single target card because I'm pretty confident this will kill Melly. Never mind, I'm I'm actually super glad she ended up killing everyone there. Wow, what a uh Honestly, I think I might do one more match after this. We'll we'll do just one more, because that one towards the beginning of the video was super quick versus the Millum. 3-6, man. I still I know I said I was gonna stop at 4-6, but considering I am almost at the 600 milestone, I think I might go to finish the second rotation. Fingers crossed I can get another dupe for Elizabeth before we actually finish that. And man, look at the damage we're taking. Holy. Quickly check the stats before we throw off this ultimate, and please don't surrender. Yeah, look, another another 10,000. An extra 100,000 HP. That is crazy. We'll go 1, 2, and 3. No way anyone can survive that. And what do we reckon the damage is going to be like from Elizabeth? Maybe 1 mil? 500,000. She's still... That ultimate is still so underwhelming compared to the melee one. However, melee's ultimate is obviously meant to be the strongest DPS ultimate in the game. He's not reviving characters with his ultimate. But there we go, that about does it for today's video. Super, super fun trying out the Trader Meliodas with Elizabeth. I definitely see myself using this combo quite a bit. Still have yet to decide what I reckon the strongest combo is going to be for this Elizabeth, but that just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. Really means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.